Today, we're building a DIY water alarm. Don't go anywhere. What's up YouTube and all my fish keeping friends? How's it going out there in fish tank land? This is Joseph Harden from JH Aquatics and I'm here to share with you all my fish keeping adventures, knowledge and more. Now today we're going to go ahead and build a DIY water alarm. I've overflown my water enough times now at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and build a DIY water alarm using a kit from Radio Shack. Let's get right into it. Okay guys, so I have all my stuff laid out here. I have the uh, kit. It's, um, it says a build it water alarm kit. Water sounds as water is detected. So this little deal here will detect the water. Nine volt battery on that and then there's a little uh, piezo a little uh, speaker there. All right, so let's just go through the kit real quick. Okay, let's see. I have the instructions. This piece of positive and negative wires there. We have the nine volt battery holder. And we have the circuit board. We have some screws and nuts, and we have, that's everything out of the bag. We have the sensor, this looks like a positive and negative here, two sides on that. And then in here we have the buzzer, we have two resistors, and we have a transistor. All right, so that's everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim up these resistors and get them on the board. I'm gonna get most everything ready to, and on the board and go through the instructions here, basically. And I'm gonna get going on this baby and try to get this baby soldered together. So I have all my tools. I have my soldering gun. I have my clippers here. I have strippers just in case I need them as well. And I have my solder. Keep in mind, this is not how to keep your solder, FYI. And then I have some shrink wrap and stuff like that for wires if I needed that or whatnot. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting everything on this board. Now first I'm gonna go ahead and remove the paper from the ends of the resistors. Now I'm going to go ahead and straighten up about a 5 or 6 inch piece of my improperly stored solder. Keep in mind this solder is a little big for this job, so it's going to go ahead and leave a little bit more solder than I'd like. I'm going to go ahead and start by soldering on the buzzer. Why not? The key to a good solder job involves keeping the solder and the soldering iron at a 90 degree angle from each other. There we go, looks pretty good. Now we can go ahead and clip off the excess pins from the buzzer. Next, we have to go ahead and bin the pins for the resistors at a 90 degree angle, directly at the ends of each side of each resistor. This is just going to help to make sure that the resistor fits properly into the circuit board. Again, go ahead and bend the pins to the resistor directly at a 90 degree angle right at the end of each side of that resistor. Keep in mind resistors are not polarized so they can actually be inserted either way. Now 
now we can go ahead and solder the resistors to the circuit board. Now remember guys, don't solder like I am. Keep your circuit board faced, facing up on a level plane. So your solder doesn't want to fall off the board. Here I go again, trying to defy gravity. Okay, now we can go ahead and clip off the excess pins from the resistors. Looking good. Now just one more piece. I'm going to go ahead and prepare the transistor by bending the middle pin forward and the outer pins back just a little bit. Be gentle when inserting the transistor into the circuit board. You can break off the pins. I'm going to go ahead and solder and clip off the excess pins of the transistor just like the others. Finally, we can go ahead and solder the battery clip to the circuit board. And next, we will prepare the PVC parts. Okay guys, now that I have the initial soldering done, it's a kind of shoddy job, but it's pretty good. It's not the cleanest work I've ever done. But um, that basic part is there. And then we have the cord that's going to go from the uh, circuit board and battery to the sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my PVC pipe. I have a piece of PVC pipe that I'm going to use and a couple of fittings. My plan is to set this sensor up inside of here with a little bit of hot glue and just attach it. It'll be hidden on the inside. The cord's going to run up through the cord's going to run up through the pipe and then go around it's going to go up and over and hang over the side of the tank with these two 90s and then the circuit board will be on the outside of this on another piece of pipe that will come down with a cap on the end to keep anything from siphoning out of the tank by, by chance at all. So that's basically it and I'm going to slap this baby together. I'm not going to glue anything. Um, I did melt a hole in here for the wire so that the wire can come out through the PVC pipe. So I'm going to use this piece for one of my runs and that uh, the wire will come out through the pipe so that it can go to the circuit board. So that's the only thing I have to kind of run it. I have to run it through here. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now and then finish the soldering. I'm just deciding how big I want to cut this piece for the dry side of the alarm. I'm going to go ahead and clip it right there. the cap on the end of it. Now I can go ahead and feed the sensor wire through the hole in the PVC pipe. I'm going to go ahead and pull enough through so that I can thread on all of the other pieces and fittings. Now I can go ahead and cut and prepare all of the other pieces.
there we go. Now I can go ahead and thread on all of the other pieces and fittings. I'm going to go ahead and leave a few inches of wire to work with so that I can solder on the sensor. You can take this time to push all the fittings together and tighten everything up. Okay, looking good. Now we can go ahead and solder the sensor to the wires. And then I can go ahead and put it inside of the PVC T. And then you can pull the excess wire through the hole on the other end. Nice, looks good. Now we can also go ahead and secure the circuit board to the battery clip using the screws and nuts provided. And last but not least, we go ahead and solder on the sensor wires to the circuit board. Okay guys, so now I'm getting down to the last little bit. Now, I can't really strap it up to the PVC pipe like this because it's going to block the buzzer and it's going to block the sound by strapping up that way with some zip ties. So my plan in the end, honestly, I'm going to zip tie the battery to the pipe and then just pop this on it like that. Anyways, that's the plan anyways. Let's go ahead and try that out right now while the camera is rolling. Let's see if we can make this work. Face down. Just make sure the battery's set up just right for the for the uh, the connector. And looks like it's going to have to be a little bit like that. Get it as tight as I can. Click, click, click. I'm going to call it. I'm praying this works. Okay. Now, I can slide it up a little bit. That clicked right in there. That works. Looks good to me. And there you go. little sensor inside of there comes up through out through the hole I made there and you've got the battery strapped to the PVC pipe and the circuit board and everything clipped onto that so let's go try it out okay guys I have my water reservoir right here I have my new little water sensor water alarm here I'm gonna go ahead and lay it over the side and it looks like I have a little bit of, uh, it, it lays pretty nicely. It looks like it'll lay right there. It's not going to fall off, that's for sure. And it'll probably work pretty well in a fish tank as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set it up right here. And kick this water on and let it get up to that level and see what happens. All right, guys, let's see if this works. Let's see if this water alarm actually does what it's supposed to do. Let's see, let's see. There we go. And it works. 
That is awesome. The battery alarm is successfully working. Very awesome, very awesome. So maybe I should turn the water off, right? All right, guys, there you go. There's my DIY water alarm. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I'm happy to have it now because it's gonna save me a lot of uh, cleanups, that's for sure. So um, check it out, see if you can find one of these with Radio Shack still. If not, I'm sure there's other little kits you can find like this where you could probably just buy one and not have to build one, but this is pretty awesome as well. So thank you guys so much, I really do appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And remember guys, keep your tanks clean, your fish fed, and have fun.